So patients ask a lot of times about immunotherapy for stage four disease. Well, generally immunotherapy actually is mainly used in stage four disease. That's really its sort of strength or main use. Um, however, nowadays people are talking a lot more about neoadjuvant immunotherapy. So you are seeing it used in earlier stage disease where patients would normally have surgical treatment and they still will. They give the patients immunotherapy just prior to surgery and the idea is to reduce the future risk of metastasis or recurrence and, and the data looks really good. So I think you're going to start seeing this more where immunotherapy is going to be used across the board from stage one to stage four. Um, but clearly for, for many years now, immunotherapy was much more reserved for some of the advanced cancers. And, uh, and that's, you know, certainly I think it's strength, but obviously it works well, you know, in, in many cancers. The clear thing that we know, combinations, you know, using more and more immunotherapies. Back originally 2011 when Eurovoic was approved, that was the only option. 2014 we got Optivo and Keytruda. And really up until this year, there was really nothing that was truly new. There was a lot of similar, you know, there's numerous immunotherapies that work like those. Uh, it wasn't until Opduo lag being approved in March of this year that has a lag three inhibitor. So essentially you have the CTLA-4, the PD-1 or PDL one and lag three. Uh, but, you know, clearly there's many more immunotherapies that are, that are in the works and development. Uh, you've got TIM-3, ICOS, VISTA, uh, Tigit, so many of these others. And the thing is, is that, you know, what we've seen is you've got to use more and more combinations of immunotherapies. And, you know, if you're clearly one drug, uh, you know, worth trying, but most of the time it's not going to work. Uh, two drugs better, certainly side effects go up. Three drugs even better. Uh, in our experience, because, you know, we're going into the tumor, we really start seeing, you know, good results once you're going to about eight drugs. And, and we sometimes use more. We can go 10 plus. Uh, but when you put them in the tumor, you're able to affect that local tumor microenvironment. You're not getting the drugs everywhere, so you're reducing the risk of those systemic side effects. You could never give eight or 10 immunotherapy drugs intravenously. The patients would have tremendous side effects and autoimmune issues. But putting it into the tumor, putting those drugs and teaching the immune system to attack right where the cancer is, you know, that's the key. And, and this is gonna be the standard of, of care in the future. Things are already moving that way, slowly but surely. And so, um, you know, very exciting, but again, you know, the combinations of immunotherapy, that's what you really need. Um, also, you know, in the future, uh, what people will do, which we do in, in, in some of our patients already, is that you look and what, when you treat the tumor, what does it do? What, how does it respond? And then you respond in counter. You know, if it upregulates a certain receptor, you block that receptor. And so um, looking and analyzing these real time, and it's very personalized. You can't really say, oh, this, these cancers are gonna be used with this drug. A lot of times you need to change it. There is sort of a broad coverage or a broad combination that works in a high percentage of patients, but I think to get those specific ones, you've gotta do some more detailed analysis. And that's the direction that all the cancer treatments are going. And so certainly a, a very exciting time for cancer patients.